Hi, this is Mr. Ward. I'm going to do a quick video on how to quadratic formula. So here we have, I've got four quadratic equations here. I've got y equals x squared plus 3x plus 2, which is factorable, and you could, I would solve it that way, but I'm going to show you how it will work. Uh, then I've got y equals x squared plus 5x minus 7, uh, y equals negative x squared plus 8x plus 1, and y equals 3x squared minus 10x plus 1. These last three are not factorable by the methods we've used so far. Uh, they will need either completion of the square, which is kind of clunky, or using the quadratic formula. So let's go to it. So of course, we could factor this as x plus 2 times x plus 1, and we would get x-intercepts at negative 2 and negative 1. Notice the plus 2 makes a negative 2 x-intercept, and the plus 1 makes a negative 1 x-intercept. But what we want to do is instead work it out through the quadratic formula. And we're going to identify A, B, and C, because we need to know what A, B, and C are. And it's already in standard form, square term, linear term, constant term. And so A is 1. So we know A equals 1. B equals 3, because that's what's times x. And C equals Two. So we're just going to go through the quadratic uh, formula here, and we're going to replace the things that we need to replace. Okay, so B we know is 3. B is 3, so we're going to have a 3 squared. And then we're going to have a 4 times 1. And then C is going to be 2, so we replace C with 2. And then A is 1. <clears throat> now my next step is to simplify that. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by simplifying... Uh, easy thing, so 2 times 1 is just 2. And then I really want to simplify what's in the radical. We call this thing the discriminant because it's going to discriminate whether or not we have 1, 2, or uh, no solutions in the real number system, whether we have to go to uh, the so-called complex symmetry system. You're not going to deal with that so much in this level. Um, I'll talk about that in a separate video. But 3 squared is easiest if you do manage all this. You may have noticed I only did the plus version. We'll deal with the minus version after I've simplified things. Okay, so 3 squared is 9. That's weird. Okay, that's not what I meant to say. 3 squared is 9, and 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. And that becomes 1. 9 minus 8 is 1. And then the square root, uh, so I'm going to now, at this point, I'm going to do a plus and minus version, and I'll simplify them separately. So the square root of 1 is either going to be positive 1, or it's going to be negative 1. And now we can go ahead and simplify each of these. So this one will become 3, negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2, and negative 2 over 1 will be negative 1, and you can see that it is negative 1 right there, and that was one of the things we predicted. And then, of course, negative 3 um, minus 1 is negative 4. Okay, so we got negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2, which is what we got. So our solutions are, again, negative 1 and negative 2. We confirm this by graphing this. The solutions are negative 1 and negative 2. Those are the zeros, the solutions, the x-intercepts, the roots of this quadratic. Now we're going to take a look at the next one. Um, so hopefully that was clear enough. So the next one we got to identify a, b, and c. So a is going to equal 1, b is going to equal 5, because 5 is times x, 1 is times x squared, and c will equal negative 7, <clears throat> because that negative makes it a negative 7. That's the same as 5x plus negative 7. So now we'll go ahead and set up the quadratic formula. Uh, negative b plus um, or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I don't need those parentheses anymore. And so now let's go through and replace things. So B will be 5, wherever it shows up. A will be 1. C will be negative 7. 
and A, of course, is 1. So we'll tidy everything up. I'll start with the denominator, 2 times 1, and then I'll deal with the discriminant, the stuff that's within the radical. So 5 squared is 25, and then 4 times 1 is 4, and then 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. 25 minus 28 is plus 28, and then I add 25 and 28, and I'm going to get 53, and that is definitely not a reducible uh, radical. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to copy that, and that becomes minus, and so I have my two solutions. Let's test them out. These here are the decimal rounded estimated versions. These here are the exact solutions. Okay, so when I turn that on, we can see that we have negative 6.14-ish and 1.14-ish. And there's one more thing that might be worth noticing. If we click here, we have a vertex at negative 2.5 and, and this number here. Notice where the negative 2.5 comes from. If I were to add these together and divide them to, well, this one, I could split this up, okay? So I could split this up as negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5, plus uh, the square root of 53 over 2. And I can also write that for the other one as negative 5 halves minus. So what I'm saying is in the middle is negative 5 halves, which there it is. It's in the middle, negative 2.5. Okay, so in the middle is negative 5 halves. And our x-intercepts are either root 53 over 2 to the right or root 53 over 2 to the left. So, in fact, they are. So if you add to negative 2.5 plus root 53 over 2, you get that. If you subtract it, you get that. Okay, so I found my solutions. Now let's do this one. Um, in this case, A. A is going to equal negative 1. B equals 8. And C equals 1. Okay, and so the quadratic formula, will set it up. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Drop my parentheses because I don't need them. And let's just start plugging in. So B is 8, wherever it shows up. That's 8. A is negative 1. C is 1. And then A is negative 1. So let's tidy up the, denom the denominator. That's going to be a negative 2. Actually, I'm going to leave that there. 2 times negative 1. Copy pasta. Now tidy up. So I'm going to leave that version there for you all. Okay. 8 squared is 64. And then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And we don't care about times 1. 64 minus, minus 4 is plus 4. So that's 68. Okay. 68, we can actually simplify. Simplify that we can. So 68 is 4 times 17. So that's 4 times 17. And so that means that we can take that 4 out of the radical and get the square root of it, and that'll be 2. Okay, now I have one, a couple more things to do. If I were to factor a negative 2 out of, if I were to factor a 2 out of top and bottom, I'd end up with a negative 1 on the bottom. But if I factored a negative 2 out of top and bottom, I completely wipe out my denominator, and I deal with the negative at the same time. So if I factor a negative 2 out here, negative 8 becomes positive 4, and 2 becomes negative 1, which we don't care about writing the 1. And now I have one of my versions. Now I'm going to make my other version, and remember that's a plus negative 1, so I'm going to change the sign to minus, so that becomes plus. And those are my roots, my solutions uh, for this quadratic. 
Okay, so let's turn it on and confirm that. So four plus or minus the square root of 17. Four is going to be the x value of the vertex. So let's find our x-intercepts there and there. So we ended up with, we got 8.123 and negative one, 2.123. And I do have 8.123 and negative 0.123. And I predicted that the vertex has an x value of 4, and it does. One more. I have one more quadratic now to do. Uh, so we found those solutions. Now one more. This one has a lead coefficient that is not 1 or negative 1, so it's a little more annoying. And let's see. A will equal 3. B will equal negative 10. And C will equal one. And so we set up the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we start plugging stuff in. Okay, so b is negative 10 and negative 10. I'm going to put that negative 10 in parentheses because I'm squaring the whole thing. And then a is 3 and c is 1, so a is 3. So let's copy past of that and start simplifying. My denominator becomes a 6 because that's 2 times 3. I've got a negative negative 10, which is positive 10. And let's deal with the stuff that's in the radical, the thing that's called the discriminant. That's a 100. And 4 times 3 is 12, and we don't care about times 1. So I've got 100 minus 12, which is going to be... 88. And 88, you probably notice, has a factor of 4 in it. So I can say 4 times 22. I won't be able to get any more uh, perfect squares out of 22, but I can pull out the 4 from square root jail and make it a 2 or a negative 2. Now, before I do anything, I notice I've got all even terms. So I'm going to reduce everything. I'm going to factor a 2 out of everything. So the 6 becomes a 3, the 2 becomes a 1, and the 10 becomes a 5. So the 1 I don't care about anymore. And now I've just got to make the minus version. So 5 plus root 22 over 3, and 5 minus root 2 over 3. Those are my solutions. Let's see if they match the equation. So here's the equation. And I've got my x-intercepts here and here. So I've got a 3.23. That was definitely one of my solutions. And a 0.103-ish. That's my other solution. Now, my vertex, since I've got 5 plus or minus root 22 all over 3, my vertex should be at 5 thirds or 1 and 2 thirds. So 1.6-ish, 1.67-ish. And there it is. All right. I hope that was helpful, and I'll stop the video now.